everyone's favorite space probes, the Voyagers, are back in the headlines again. And recently, it looked like we almost lost communication with Voyager 1 for good. Back on December the 12th, 2023, NASA reported that Voyager 1's flight data system, which consists of three onboard computers, started sending binary gibberish data back to Earth. A repeating pattern of ones and zeros that made no sense to the engineers. When the glitch first occurred, engineers could still send signals to the distant probe and could tell it was still operating, but something was clearly wrong. The first thing that NASA tried was rebooting the system, but that didn't work, and the probe kept talking nonsense. But after months of trying every trick in the book, NASA engineers finally came up with a solution. We'll get to that in a moment, but first let's take a closer look at the Voyager 1 probe and you'll see just how remarkable it was for the engineering team to come up with a fix for the glitch in the first place. First of all, it's astonishing that the Voyager 1 and 2 probes have been traveling in space for nearly 47 years now, and NASA has been doing everything it can to keep the probes operational. Not only to squeeze as much data about interstellar space from them as possible, but also hoping they'll still be operational for their 50th anniversary in space. Voyager 2 was launched first back on August the 20th, 1977, and Voyager 1 on September the 5th, 1977, making them the oldest active space probes. One of the most remarkable things about the Voyager probes is that they were only designed to last four years. When Voyager 1's communications glitch first reared its ugly head, NASA engineers thought it might be the end of communications with Voyager 1, saying it was a very tense situation. We certainly don't want to lose communication with the probe after all it's accomplished and been through. Voyager 1 is a very important spacecraft that's achieved some very remarkable feats. It's a scientific legend, to say the least. It discovered that one of Jupiter's moons, Io, wasn't just a dead rock, but a supervolcanic world. This color-processed image of a volcano on the moon erupting out into space was so incredible, it blew everyone's minds, and was a huge surprise for NASA scientists. And this breathtaking image of Saturn that Voyager 1 grabbed wowed everyone. Not only were the images incredible, but the probe also discovered that Saturn's largest moon, Titan, might actually have liquid water on its surface. And these are just a couple of the things that the probe has discovered. So what happened to Voyager 1, and what caused the spacecraft to stop communicating normally? It turns out that a critical system had gone haywire. Voyager 1's flight data system is an essential component that enables the spacecraft to function autonomously during its deep space journey. And currently, the probe is an unbelievable 15.5 billion miles away from Earth. So the fact that we communicate with the probe is an amazing feat. But there's a mind-blowing reason for this that not many people know, and we'll tell you about that in a few moments. But first, back to the glitch. The flight data system of Voyager 1 is made up of various components working together to manage the spacecraft's operations. This includes the central computer, data storage units, command interface, and telemetry systems. The primary computer aboard Voyager 1 is the Command and Data Subsystem, or CDS, which processes commands sent from Earth and manages the spacecraft's functions. And in case you're not familiar with the computers aboard the Voyagers, then you'll want to see this. Voyager 1's computer system is very primitive by modern standards. The Command and Data Subsystem only has 68 kilobytes of memory and a processing speed of only 8 kilohertz which would be around 8,000 instructions, or cycles, per second. To give you an idea of just how primitive that is, a modern-day central processing unit with a clock speed of 3 GHz executes 3 billion cycles per second. And most smartphones today have 32 GB of memory. In contrast, the difference in storage is like having a cup with 68 drops of water in it compared to 32 Olympic-sized swimming pools worth of water. The problem with the glitch occurred on the flight data system, which is a critical component of the spacecraft's overall architecture, responsible for managing and processing data collected during its mission. The primary purpose of the flight data system is to collect, process, and transmit scientific data gathered by Voyager 1's instruments and experiments back to Earth. You could look at it as the central nervous system of the spacecraft coordinating its various subsystems and enduring smooth operation throughout its journey. 
After months of trying to figure out what was going on, engineers at NASA discovered that around 3% of the flight data system's memory was corrupted. It's possible that the malfunction was caused by charged particles in deep space, or it could just simply be from age. Of course, mission engineers couldn't repair the chip, so what they did was break the corrupted code held on the failed chip into pieces that they could tuck into spare corners of the FDS's memory. The first fix was transmitted to the Voyager 1 probe on April the 18th. With a total of 30 billion miles to traverse from Earth to the spacecraft and back, the NASA team had to wait nearly two full days to receive a response from the probe. But on April the 20th, 2024, and with a huge sigh of relief, NASA got back a reply from the probe that the fix worked. Now, engineers will have to rewrite the rest of the flight data system's lost code in the coming weeks. This will include commands that will restore the probe's ability to send home more important science data. This is far from the first time that the probes have had failures. The long years in the harsh environment of space have been hard on Voyager 1 and 2. Contact with Voyager 2 was lost in August 2023 and engineers thought that that would be the last time we would hear from it again. But just a few days later, communication was again established. Because the two spacecraft have been in space for such a long time, NASA engineers have been forced to shut down some of the probe systems. Voyager 1 currently has 4 out of 10 instruments running, and Voyager 2 has 5 of the 10 still operational. To save power on the probes, NASA engineers have powered down heaters and other systems to save power for the high-gain antenna, which is the probe's main contact point with Earth. The other instruments that are still active are the magnetometers and low-field magnetometer, which measure the magnetic fields of the Sun and outer planets. One of the key findings of this instrument happened back in 2015, when the craft discovered that even past the heliopause, which is the outer edge of the heliosphere that acts like the surface of the bubble that surrounds our solar system, that solar winds can still redirect the magnetic field of charged particles they encounter. The low-energy charged particle instruments are still active on both probes. It was this instrument that helped researchers locate the heliopause in 1993, after a violent burst of solar activity from the Sun. Hydrazine thrusters are still active on both craft that propel the spacecraft and help them keep warm. And both space probes have a micrometeorite shield that protects the instruments at the rear of the spacecraft from dust and tiny particles. The other important instruments that are still powered are called the optical calibration target instruments, which calibrate each of the probe's charged particle instruments. Both of the Voyagers have had their instruments pointed to the target plate for calibration countless times during their long deep space travels. Other instruments on the probes are switched off, and some have been off for decades now to conserve power. Aside from the instruments are the probe's radioisotope thermoelectric generators. These generators use plutonium-238 to power the craft and keep them warm, and have allowed the probes to extend their missions for such a long time. However, they are starting to become weaker and weaker, and one day will stop operating altogether, ending the Voyager missions forever. And that day could come very soon. But just because the probes will one day go silent, that doesn't mean that the Voyagers will be useless to us. Let's not forget that both spacecraft carry a message from Earth for other advanced civilizations that might be out there, and a couple potentially spot these probes in space. The Voyager Golden Records are phonograph records that were put aboard both of the Voyager spacecrafts. These records were intended to provide a snapshot of Earth and its inhabitants for any extraterrestrial intelligence that might encounter the probes in the distant future. The records include recordings of various natural sounds from Earth, such as thunder, bird songs, and the sound of ocean waves. They also contain greetings, spoken in 55 languages, and musical selections from different cultures around the world. Some of the music pieces include Bach's Brandenburg Concerto No. 2, Beethoven's Symphony No. 5, and, believe it or not, Chuck Berry's Johnny B. Good. The records also contain 116 images encoded in analog form, depicting various aspects of life on Earth, including landscapes, animals, human anatomy, and scientific diagrams. It's certainly worth mentioning that the content was curated by a committee chaired by the late great Carl Sagan, the astronomer, cosmologist and science communicator. The records are made of gold-plated copper and are designed to withstand the rigours of space travel for billions of years. 
and each record is encased in an aluminium cover with instructions for playback engraved on the outside, including information on how to build a stylus and a cartridge to play the records, as well as a diagram showing the location of the sun relative to 14 pulsars, which can be used to determine the time and place of origin of the spacecraft. Yes, if there are hostile aliens out there, we just gave them directions to our planet. They might not care that the primary purpose of the Golden Records is to convey a message of goodwill from humanity to any extraterrestrial beings that might intercept the Voyager probes. Well, let's hope that doesn't happen anytime soon. Now, remember when we told you that we had something mind-blowing to tell you? It has to do with the amazing fact that we're still able to communicate with the probes at all, with them both being over 15 billion miles away. Voyager 1 is moving away from us at around 38,000 miles per hour, and Voyager 2 is moving at around 35,000 miles per hour. But here's something interesting that you probably didn't know. For a portion of every year, the Earth comes around the Sun and is moving towards both spacecraft faster than they're moving away. That's right, Earth in its orbit swings towards the spacecraft at a speed of 67,000 miles per hour. Therefore, their distance to Earth are getting closer temporarily. They never change their outward motion, it is us and the Earth that changes. Both of the Voyager probes continue their mission to explore interstellar space and transmit valuable scientific data back to Earth. They remain the farthest human-made objects from Earth, operating beyond the influence of our Sun's solar wind in the interstellar medium. They are truly a testament to the ingenuity of the human imagination. That's all we have for today, but be sure to stay tuned here for more updates on the Voyagers as we hear about them. Let us know if you want to hear more about the discoveries from these amazing probes in the comments, and thanks for watching.